basically the next topic that motivates our next topic which is you know we need to understand how uh, you know um, uh, we know that the individual elements namely the resistors and uh, transistors etc are noisy we need to understand when we put all these elements together what happens to the output noise of a network okay so that's the topic that we will uh, uh, study next once we study noise we'll be in a position to come back to filters uh, for a brief while and uh, uh, look at what the lowest what do you call uh, signal you can put into the filter will be in order to achieve a certain uh, accepted signal to noise ratio at the output of the filter hmm? so All right. Uh, how many of you have looked at noise? I mean, have studied noise uh, uh, in uh, earlier which course? Okay. And uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, how many of you have looked at uh, have have been introduced to noise uh, from a communication class point of view? One, two. Okay. The BTECs have uh, have not seen uh, noise at all. Okay. So, uh, uh, for those of you who have seen it in a communication class, right, uh, uh, you know, uh, we are not going to go into long theorem proof type uh, uh, results here. Our aim is, you know, given a circuit, can I predict how much noise there is at its output and what the characteristics of that noise are, okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, and again the uh, uh, the idea is uh, to work with uh, with uh, practical circuits and be able to understand uh, how to calculate noise, what to do to make uh, to get better noise performance, and that sort of thing. Hmm? So, uh, I mean, to get to this stage in communications, you would go through several classes of what a random process is, you know, what uh, what ergodicity is, and uh, uh, you know, what autocorrelation is, and then you know. Uh, Wiener Kinchain theorem and all that stuff, okay. It is before you come to you know the calculations that we do, right. Uh, we are going to skip all that, right. And your uh, all that I am interested in uh, in this course is to give you a minimum bare bones uh, tool set needed to be able to make useful noise calculations in circuits, all right. Uh, so, First, I am going to mention some facts of life, uh, there is nothing we can do about these things, all right. So, it turns out that you know if you had uh, a resistor in thermal equilibrium with its uh, surroundings uh, with uh, an absolute temperature T, it turns out that if you put a fictitious voltmeter uh, across uh, the resistor right it turns out that the voltage is not you would ideally think that the voltage should be zero right no current is flowing through uh, the resistor after all so you would think the voltage is zero but it turns out that you will see a very you know uh, uh, you will see a random waveform it is almost impossible for me to draw the draw the draw uh, a random waveform all right okay uh, so but you will see some random wave Okay, without knowing anything else, what comment can we make about the mean of this random waveform? Zero. Why? I mean, why is it? Why should it be? How do you kind of say zero all in unison? I can't hear you. Power. What conservation? Where? Well, there is a voltage, so there's definitely power. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, my, uh, the easiest way to understand this is if if the average was not zero, then we would be able to. I mean, there's no need for us to sit here. We could go be making power and then selling it. Correct? Okay. So you know, it sounds too good to be true. And remember, in life, anything that sounds too good to be true is is always too good to be true, right? And uh, therefore, the average better be zero. 
no matter you know uh, what else is true the average better be zero hmm? so first fact of life the voltage across the resistor uh, vn of t on average is zero all right the next fact of life is this is vn of t the next fact of life is that if you take this vn of t you recorded that vn of t right pass this through a bandpass filter an ideal brick wall bandpass filter centered at a frequency f right and had has a bandwidth of a small bandwidth delta f right what do you think the bandpass filter will do this is an ideal bandpass filter perfect brick wall with a bandwidth of delta f and centered at f what will the bandpass filter do it will it will remove all frequency i mean this is a random waveform this is some waveform so evidently it has some spectrum correct you pass take this waveform and then pass this through a bandpass filter the bandpass filter is only going to pick up those components which are centered at f and in a neighborhood of delta f around f okay so if you look at this waveform on a scope what do you think uh, this will look like it will look like a i mean it, i mean uh, it can't look like a sine wave of f uh, of frequency f i mean if you had to get the uh, i mean it can't be a sine a sine wave with frequency f because if the output is a sine wave pure sine wave then this is a linear time invariant filter so the input must also be a must be a sine wave right but the input is is kind of uh, randomly varying so what does it it uh, because it's a bandpass filter the output will look like a sinusoid but it's because it's being driven by a random input the out the magnitude and phase of that sinusoid the amplitude and phase of the sinusoid will keep varying so you will basically say, see a sinusoid like waveform whose whose amplitude and phase are all right so you can measure the mean square value of this waveform this is a waveform it's a free country so i can nothing is preventing me from measuring the mean square value of of this waveform right and if you do if you so make the measurement it turns out that that mean square value will be 4 kt r times delta again this is uh, what do you call a fact of life okay and those of you who are interested in figuring out why this is so feel free to go and this has got to do with uh, you know quantum mechanics and black body radiation and all that fun stuff right okay so what is the you know kind of uh, uh, strange about this uh, formula i mean do you find something strange at all Oh, by the way, four is four. K is Boltzmann's constant. T is absolute temperature. R, of course, is the resistance value, and and uh, delta F is the bandwidth to the filter. So, what do you find? Uh, you know, as somewhat puzzling about this. Uh, uh, it doesn't have F at all. so basically this is telling you that no matter where the center frequency of the bandpass filter is the output mean square noise always happens to be 4 ktr times delta f all right so okay so the the four what we now define what's called the noise voltage spectral density i 
as I said, those of you who have not done noise before, there is no need to get intimidated, right? Okay. Uh, all that this is saying is that if I take this noise source, pass it, remember this noise voltage spectral density is a function of f, the frequency at which you are uh, uh, making the measurement, right? This is basically saying mean square value of the waveform of the waveform that appears when you take V n of t, pass it through a bandpass filter of bandwidth delta f and a center frequency f and find the mean square value here, right? And divide this by, well, if I make the filter, by, you know, bandwidth narrower, what do you expect for the mean square value at the output? What do you expect? If I make delta F 0, what do you expect at the output? You get nothing, correct? So, clearly the mean square value must be dependent on the bandwidth of the bandpass filter. So, the mean square value divided by delta F okay, is some measure of how much power there is in that waveform at that frequency, right. So, this is what is called uh, the mean square value, I mean, so the mean square value divided by delta F is basically the, this is the voltage noise spectral density as a function of F. In English, all that it means is that if you take a voltage noise, I mean a noise voltage with this spectral density, you pass it through a bandpass filter centered at F and a bandwidth delta F, you should expect that the mean square value of the voltage at the output of the bandpass filter is simply SV of F times delta F. That is all that there is to it. Okay. Now, so now that we have learned some jargon, let us try to apply it. Uh, so, what comment can we make about the noise voltage spectral density of uh, uh, a resistor? Regardless of where you put the bandpass filter, we seem to be measuring a mean square value of 4 KTR times delta F, right. So, this basically is 4 KTR and what will be the, uh, what are the dimensions of this, what are the units of this? Volt square per hertz, right. Remember that K is, what is Boltzmann's constant? One point. 3.8 into 10 power minus 20, right? And uh, units? Joules per Kelvin, all right? Is this, a, is this at room temperature or at uh, some high temperature? Huh? I mean, it is a constant, right? I mean, a constant is supposed to be constant regardless of temperature, right? That is why it is called constant. Hmm? All right. So, uh, uh, so and uh, to put some numbers so that you get a feel for this, it turns out that if you put R equal to 1 K, what comment can you make about uh, SV of F? Please do the math. Yes. 16 into 18 volt square per hertz, right? And uh, this is often uh, also expressed, the square root of this is also expressed in what is called nano volts per, I mean volts per root hertz. So, this as you can see is 4 into 10 power 9 volts per root hertz, okay? So, a good a quick number to remember is that a 1 kilo ohm resistor has uh, has a noise spectral density of noise voltage spectral density of 4 nanovolt per root hertz. 
ok. So, since we are still in early stages let us uh, you know kind of uh, see how to make some calculations. So, let us say I take the voltage waveform across a 1 kilo ohm resistor and I have a low pass filter of 1 megahertz bandwidth. How much what is the mean square value of the voltage that you see there? How do we do the math? We know that the spectral density is 4 nano volts per root hertz, the bandwidth is 1, the RMS value at the output will be simply 4 nano volt per root hertz times 10 power 3 right, which is 4 micro. So, the RMS noise of a 1 kilo uh, ohm resistor in a 1 megahertz bandwidth is 4 micro volts, right. Okay, so, this basically prompts the next question. If I make it, if, if I make the megahertz a gigahertz, what will happen? You get multiplied by 30, right. If I make the gigahertz a terahertz, what happens? Pardon? 4? Yeah. So, if I make the tera, terahertz, uh, you know, 10 billion terahertz, what will happen? If I make it infinity, what will happen? It will be, I mean, the formula is telling us that it will be infinite, correct? So, what is your comment on that? What do you think? I mean, I do not have to measure it, right? If, I mean, this is just telling you that if I just, if I do not have the filter at all, no, I do not have a filter at all, I just have a resistor that is all. It is telling me, this math is telling me that the RMS value can go to infinity, right. That basically means that you know air around it should have bro broken down and you know uh, basically we should be seeing sparks everywhere. That clearly does not happen. So, there must be something wrong with this, right. Uh, so, that is what is called the ultraviolet catastrophe and like you know. Uh, so, this all as I said the all comes back eventually to, uh, to black body radiation and I do not know if you still remember your high school physics, but you know this uh, H nu and uh, you know by e to the H nu by k t minus 1 and so on I do not know if you remember black body radiation spectrum right goes up and then it kind of eventually falls off, but uh, uh, it turns out that uh, uh, the uh, as far as circuits are concerned we are always working with frequencies which are uh, at best uh, uh, few tens of gigahertz and uh, up to those frequencies it is as good as being constant, right. At, uh, at uh, ultraviolet frequencies obviously, uh, the spectral density is uh, not constant and beyond that uh, it actually falls off. So, the integral is actually finite. So, do not go right away and then start uh, you know uh, open a startup saying we will uh, we'll, uh, generate energy, right by using resistors, huh? okay. Uh, all right. 